Hello, good people. It's Rob Lee. I'm going to do a video for you. First of all, let me say forgive the audio. Um, I will be resetting the audios, the configuration sometime this week and starting over. My audio hasn't been right in quite some time, and it's time for me to get it right. I want to do a video for you about a house fire. Actually, it was an apartment complex fire and something that helped to that helped, uh, mold my life and to shape me. And I hope that you will see the the comparisons and what it means for now in the world that we live in now i just I, th I think you'll find it incredibly compelling if you will stay with the video let me preface it by saying first of all i want to say just another quick word to you about the website that means so much to me it's flockofjesus.com i sent an email to brother lyman about getting a chat room done and about uh, getting some more done to it if you got any ideas email me talk to me if you got any articles videos music if you would like to help in any way then let me know i'm trying to get something set up to where we can start going there pretty soon and at least gathering and talking so email me and i appreciate the emails that folks have went to the website already about 75 people and have sent me emails back i really appreciate it i don't expect it to be big because this is just not a big flock it's a small flock but i want it to be right it's important to me the second thing is i did a video recently about uh seven days ago eight days ago called Fallen Angels and the, and the Flood of People, the Great Flood of People. And it's one of the better videos I've ever did. If you did not get a notification, I would suggest that you go and watch it. it it's worth your time. It's 53 minutes long, but I thought it was a really good video, and I say that humbly. Now let me get on to the video. I grew up in an average-sized city in Virginia, and I grew up in an, an apartment complex when I was a, a little boy. It was four stories high. Uh, it had like 32 apartments in it, including a basement and an attic. And I grew up walking the streets. I was a young boy. That's where that's where my home was. And this picture is very similar to what I grew up on. It was a little bit wider, um, maybe twice as wide, but big, tall, and had two big columns outside. It was called St. Charles Apartments. When I was six years old, there was a fire uh, at the apartment complex, and my mother came and got me and my sister up it was 1 a.m in the morning and she had her, there was a frantic knock on the door telling her to get up that the apartment complex was on fire and of course every, there was a guy actually going from apartment to apartment telling people and shouting telling people to get out get out the apartment was on fire now everybody knows how scary fires are man fires are scary it's, it's a it's a scary thing to be involved in any type of a fire it truly is she gets us outside, this is about 1 a.m. in the morning, the fire trucks come, there is a small fire that's been set in the basement. Now before we go further, let me tell you, my mother was the part-time housekeeper for the people that owned the building. She had, we had only been there maybe three or four months and she had rented a small storage space in the uh, basement where she had stored all her stuff. We didn't have much. I was a poor white boy growing up in the city and everything that we had, our clothing, clothes, pictures, everything that we had was in that basement. This time it did not get burned up. So the fire come and they, they put out the small fire. They don't know if it's arson, if it's the building old, if it's wiring, they don't know what it is. Okay, they leave. Everybody goes back to bed thinking this is just a one-time thing. About three o'clock that morning, again, knock at the door, screaming, frantic. There's a guy going from door to door. His name is Billy. He's telling everybody, get up, get out. There's a, there's a fire. Again, you have 32 apartments, three or four people in each apartment. It's 125, 130 people out in front of this building, 15, 20 children, maybe more outside, blankets around them. It's cold. There's another fire. It's in the basement again. Same guy, Billy, going from door to door, telling people there's a fire. Fire comes again. Fire trucks, fire people, they come, they put out the fire. Whoever's trying to set the fire, they're not able to, they're not able to accomplish what they're trying to accomplish, but they're sure as heck trying. They stay longer this time. They don't know what to make of it. And maybe there was, um, they, maybe they weren't competent. I don't know. I was just a small child. Everybody back to bed, but most folks at this point, it's 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Most, po most folks are nervous. They're scared. They don't know what to think. 6 o'clock in the morning, would you not believe? Here it comes. Screaming, shouts. And this time, the place is really caught fire. Whoever was trying to set it, they've actually, they've, they've set it this time. They've, the, the devil has done his job. 
because the apartment complex is on fire now. From the basement, the, the basement is in a blaze, man. They, I mean, it's rolling. Same guy going from door to door, everybody screaming, shouting, get out, get out, get out. Everybody's out front. Here comes the fire trucks. Here comes the fire chief this time. He comes. The fire trucks are able to swing in, in the back because we had alleys. Every, everywhere that I grew up in the city, there was alleys everywhere, alleys. They were able, they were able to get it out but everything in the basement was destroyed it was ruined but it did not spread to the first second and third and fourth floors just barely but the entire basement was just gone my mom and we we lost everything that we had we didn't have much but it was gone the fire chief was outside and this is about 6 37 o'clock in the morning and by this time they know somebody's tried to set this place ablaze and somebody has the fire chief is talking to my mother, he's talking to some other people, people are crying, people are scared, and people are mad. One of the firemen, I'm not sure if it was the chief or not, he's talking to my mother and a couple of the women and, they, and, he, and he asked them, do you, who do you think may be responsible for this? My mother looked right at this man named Billy and said that son of a is the one who did it. She had no proof. Her gut. Her instinct, her discernment told her, this monster did it. And guess what? She was right. He did it. He was taken downtown. He was questioned, and he, had, he admitted to it. He was guilty. He served three years in prison, a little bit less than three years, actually. He got out two years and change. He was given three years, I think. We lost everything we had. This man, Billy, everybody, he lived in, in the building. Everybody knew him. He was good with the children. He, everybody knew Billy. You see, the point of the story is this, folks. The devil will come to you as your friend. The devil will come to you with a handshake and a smile. The devil will come to you and all his servants will come to you as your friend. The devil's friends and the devil's children will come to you and tell you, we love you, brother. We love you, sister. This is the truth. You see, that's who they really are. That's who they really are. If you bend down to do them a favor, they'll stab you in the back. The world that we live in now is such as this. If somebody were to break in my apartment and I'm going to confront them, and I'm going to confront them harshly, trust me. I'm not boasting. I'm telling you the truth. Once I confront them, they will look at me and ask me, why are you confronting me? Yes, I'm trying to, yes, I'm trying to steal from you. Yes, I may even be here to harm you, but you don't have the right to confront me. This is what the devil and his children have always done. This is the truth. This is the truth of the world that we live in. This is the truth. For example, let me give you an example before we go further here. Monsanto has taken over the food industry. They poison the food that they give us. If you complain, they will tell you, how dare you complain? Aren't you grateful that we're giving you such an abundance of food? The same with fluoride, which is poison that's in everything, the food, the water, everything. If you complain, they'll tell you, don't you know that it's good for you? You see, this man, Billy, was a tear in the wheat. He was a tear. Now, many people, I'm tired of some of the people that come to this channel with your pro-white, pro-white. There's nothing wrong with loving white people. There's nothing wrong with loving your own. But when you come to me, and you want to promote your Christian identity, horse, manure, take it someplace, man, because you anger me, you make me want to say things to you that I shouldn't. I don't buy into your Christian identity. I don't buy, buy, buy into the black Hebrew, is, is, Israelite bull. You, the black Hebrews, the Christian identity, these crazy white people that believe that every white person is an Israelite, you are so ignorant, man, that I don't have the words for it. To be of Jacob Israel, you must be directly related to Jacob Israel. The Bible tells us there is a remnant left. A remnant is in remaining. Small. Get it? Small. This man, Billy, was a white man. He was a snake. He was a serpent. And guess what? He was white. He wasn't black. He wasn't Latino. He wasn't Jewish. He wasn't Muslim. He wasn't Hindu. He was a white man. Now, for you ignorant people, you Christian identity people, tell me you should love every white person because that's your brother. That's your white Christian, that's your white Christian Caucasian brother. <clears throat> Pardon me. I don't have, I, I'm not going to use the words because I've grown, I've evolved through Jesus Christ. 
I'm going to refrain from saying to you what I would really like to. I know who my brother is, who my sisters are. I know who my God is. I know who my king is. I don't need anybody to tell me. There are lots of evil, evil, wretched monsters walking this earth, and they are white. They are white. Satan's servants, brethren, Satan's servants are everywhere. And they come in all shapes and sizes and colors. And don't get me wrong. In the, in the devil's family, there do seem to be certain ones who are worse than others. Make no mistakes about it, man. That's a fact. But to say that every white person is good, these Christian identity people are somewhat, you see, they bother me, man, because they make people like me look bad, and I don't like it. They're the same as the Nazi people that want to fly the swastikas and say that Hitler was their daddy. Take that sh away from me. Don't bring it to me. Don't bring it to this little channel. Don't bring it to my website. Keep it away from me. I'm telling you, boy, keep it away from me. I don't want nothing to do with you. I see you all as weak. I see you as physically weak. I see you as mentally weak. I see you as spiritually weak. Stay away from me, boy. I'm telling you. Satan's servants are everywhere. They're in church. They're in the audience. They're on stage. They are the people marching that are steady trying to tell you, you don't need. You can't have no rights. They are the people that are steady telling you free abortion on demand. They are the politicians that will tell you we should racially in interbreed and they do it with a straight face. They are the monsters that will tell you that they have to kill to get their way. They are the people that make videos and can lie to you with a straight face. They are the people that can sit and eat a meal and talk about selling baby parts. They are the people in Hollywood and in the musical industry that mock Jesus Christ 24-7. They are the so-called politicians and the so-called leaders. They are the people that live across the street from you. They live next door to you. They live sometimes in the same house as you. This is the truth. You see, folks, we are not all the same. This is a fact. We're not. However, however, that does not mean that we should hate. But we sure as heck must, must use good discernment and good judgment to find out who we should have around us and who we should not. Many of you remember a guy who used to come to this channel, and we've lost some folks, folks that I thought I would never, my friendship with them would never end. God will put people in your life, and God will take people out of your life. When God is sawing the log, man, just l let God saw, okay? I mean, if he's cutting it down, it's for a reason. Don't you try to intervene. Let, let the Father do what he's going to do. Raymond Falls was a guy who used to come to this channel. I always told me how much he loved me. He appreciated me. Robert, Rod, I, I, I love you, man. You've taught me so much. In the past two weeks, Raymond Falls has sent me emails, and I'm not even going to show them to you, but you guys know that I do not lie to you. Telling me, F me, F this, F that. The last one, he told me, die, and he used the B word. This is a man who told me how much he loved me. Now, did he ever really love me? You see, you start to see the truth about people, folks. You just got to be patient. Some of the people that have left this channel, I thought were people that I really cared for, they're going a different way. They're going a different way. Everything for a reason. Everything for a reason. The only one you can truly trust is Jesus. That's who you can always trust is Jesus Christ. He won't let you down. He won't fail you. He won't hurt you. He won't cheat on you. He won't be dishonest with you. He won't talk behind your back. He'll always be straight with you, and he will always love you and take care of you. It doesn't mean that sometimes you won't get punished because you will, Revelation 3, 19 through 21. But Jesus Christ will not leave you. He will not leave you. Let's read a couple verses before we go forward and close this out. Psalm 32, 10, Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Psalm 34, 8, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Psalm 34, 22, The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. It's about trusting the Almighty Father and the gift that he gave us, named Jesus. That's the truth. Let's close, uh, brethren. Let me say something to you. There are three women in the Bible, some symbolic. One of them is Mystery Babylon, which is Jerusalem, the Antichrist system. There is, an, there is not a single Antichrist. The Babylonian system. The other is the kingdom of Jesus Christ, as, as the true woman. The other woman is a woman that nobody ever talks about, but we're going to talk about it in a future video. The third woman in the Bible, symbolically, that nobody ever talks about. All right? 
Here is the website. It's flockofjesus.com. Here is my email, robertleehall at hotmail.com. Check out the website. Shoot me an email, and we will get it done. For now, brethren, maybe we should all take a moment to thank our Father, to thank Jesus Christ for all they've done for us and what they've given us, the love that they've shown us. And we should really thank them and thank the Father for Jesus. Where would we be without Jesus? If the Father, folks, had not protected us, these monsters would have overwhelmed us. The only reason they haven't, folks, is because the Father has not allowed them. doesn't mean that we all haven't gone through our own share of hell because we most certainly have. But we have to overcome, and it's hard as hell. But if the Father would not have told us to do it if it could not have been done. So let's give thanks to Jesus. Let's give, let's give praise to our Father and to Jesus, and let's go forward. And may the Almighty Father bless each and every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.